Hello everybody, this is Gregor von Personos and welcome to this virtual NAMM presentation of mine. A very special one because we want to focus today on the Atom SQ. Now the Atom SQ is actually our second instrument in the Atom line. The first one has been the Atom pad controller and the Atom SQ is more sort of a step sequencer slash keyboard hybrid controller if you will. But it also comes with 16 incredibly velocity sensitive pads that you can play with incredible expressive also because it supports poly pressure. Atom SQ works with pretty much any DAW, but it really excels at Ableton Live and Studio One because that's where we have native integration and it works just wonderfully in these two DAWs. And instead of showing you all the ins and outs of the Atom SQ integration in Studio One and Ableton Live, I figured it might be best if I just show you my favorites that I use in my everyday workflow and also how I like to travel between Ableton Live and Studio One just like the Atom SQ does. Whenever I'm actually doing a beat, I love working in Ableton Live first because I really enjoy the session view and then I love getting everything over into Studio One and many people are actually surprised how seamless this is. So that's why in this presentation I also want to feature a bit of that workflow and I hope you find it inspiring. So without any further ado, I have Ableton Live open here. This is one of my typical sessions. And as you can see, I already have a couple of clips composed that I like to trigger at different points in time. So if I go to the song page, I have all of the navigations available that I need to start and stop clips, to solo, arm and mute tracks. And I'm just gonna show you around a little bit. So that would be my first clip right here, the bass. If I wanna adjust the volume of it, I can just do that with these knobs which actually have multipliers in them so as I'm turning them faster I'm actually able to control the volume in much coarser ranges then I'm also able to control the pan and then all the sense and if I just want to go to the next one I just use the arrow keys pretty much exactly like you would on a computer keyboard this is really what makes the Atom SQ so intuitive in my view now let's start and launch the second clip. Let's make that a little bit louder. Stopping clips is also very easy, of course. And this is really the strength of Ableton Live in my eyes. If I want a solo, that's incredibly easy to do. Same with mute. And thanks to this blue frame that you can see here, I always know exactly where the Atom SQ is currently located. So that's clip launching, selecting and arming, but that's of course only the tip of the iceberg. Let's continue. Next up we have the touch strip and this actually allows us to control the crossfader in Ableton Live. So if I just open this up really quickly and move the touch strip over here, you can see how I'm now controlling the uh, AB crossfader in Ableton Live, a perfect tool for DJs indeed. So that would be the basics of the song page. Let's go to the instrument page next and have a look. The first mode is key and that essentially means that all the pads are ordered exactly like they would be on a classic piano. Next mode is uh, blocks and this is great if you're playing percussive instruments because this allows you to play two drum racks at the same time. So let me show you. So as you can see, two drum racks available separately, very cool. And then the next mode is for me the most exciting one, and that is continuous. So continuous relies on the scale that you have set. So if I could just go ahead here and um, choose like, for example, C minor here, then 
all the nodes that are not part of this scale are essentially hidden from view. So now it's impossible for me to play any notes that are not part of the scale. Another little gem for me is the 16 velocity mode. Let me show you. So in order to access the 16 velocity mode, you first of all have to be set to blocks and you also have to be set to chromatic. And now you can tap that lower right button and set it not just to all velocities and full velocities, so meaning 0 to 127 or fixed 127 velocity, but also to 16 step velocity. And what you get then is the pitches at the top row and then 16 different velocity strengths for the last played note at the bottom row. This is particularly great for drums, expressive percussions, snare rolls and anything like that. Then we have two more modes to cover here. Let's do them fast forward. The first one would be the user mode. You just access that by tapping the button here. And this essentially allows you to MIDI learn the encoders at the top, the touch strip, the pads and so forth through Ableton Live's integration. So you just click on that respective button in Ableton Live. And now you can assign any of the knobs or the touch strip or these pads here to whatever you want really. The editor page is also extremely handy because it makes controlling parameters of instruments and effects an absolute breeze. You just tap it once and then add an insert, for example, here on our bass. You can actually go to the song page first and uh, solo that really quickly, hear it. Could use some kind of upper harmonic enhancement, possibly through distortion. And luckily for us, the awesome red light distortion effect, as you might know from Studio One, is also available as a VST3, AU and AAX plugin, um, thanks to Personas Hub. And I have that right here available in Ableton now. And now if I'm on the editor page, I can immediately start tweaking this. I really like that when you bypass red light distortion, the light goes off as well. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> That's so Amsterdam. All right. And let's just unsolo this. Cool, so now that we have the fundament of a beat, let's get that over to Studio One for production and mastering. And uh, in case you're wondering why I don't like doing that in Ableton Live, I do, but I think that Studio One and Ableton Live have completely different and unique strengths. They're not really competitors as such, they're more complementary. And hopefully the workflow I'm about to show you is gonna inspire you to try out some of these two DAW workflows once in a while. One thing that I would recommend you to do first is that you disable rewire support in Studio One if you're just using Ableton Live in Studio One with rewire. The reason being that um, you always have to follow a very strict order so you can only launch Studio One before Ableton Live. If Ableton Live is already open, you have to quit it first and then open up Studio One, which is very clunky and uh, very interrupting to this intuitive flow that I'm going to show you. And also VST support is going to be disabled in Ableton Live. Ton of disadvantages really and limitations with nothing on the plus side. So if you're just using Ableton Live and Studio One together, then there's no need to uh, keep Rewire enabled. If you want to disable it, just open up Studio One, go to the preferences here, head to the advanced section if you're not there already, to the services tab. You gotta promise you, careful, we have warned you. And uh, although nothing can really happen, <laughs> you just disable Rewire support, restart Studio One, and you're ready to follow along. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that the Adam SQ cannot handle two different control maps at once, obviously. So if you're planning on using the Adam SQ in Studio One now instead of Ableton, you actually don't have to remove it from Ableton or anything like that. Just simply um, unassign the MIDI ins and outs for the time being and assign them in Studio One instead and the control map should switch right away. So here I have the blank canvas of Studio One and what I like to do is just uh, get that over to one half of my screen and have uh, Ableton Live on the other half, just like that. And now let me show you how incredibly simple it is to get all of these clips over to Studio One. If I have insert effects on a certain clip, like the bass right here, then I should flatten that first. That's fortunately very easy to do in Ableton Live. You just right click it, you're gonna freeze that track. And once that's done, you're just gonna right click again and flatten it. And once that's done, you can simply drag it over from Ableton Live, check this out into your Studio One song. Isn't that incredible? I absolutely love it. And um, if we wanna do this with all the other ones as well, we don't have any effects applied on them so far. Insert effects, that is, we could just select them all like this and drag them over, but unfortunately that's not supported as of yet. We would have to do it either one by one or a much faster approach is to simply right click and then use the show in browser command. This is gonna take you to the source folder of all these clips and then just select the ones that you want except um, the base which we've just flattened and processed and dragged it over to Studio One and as you can see that works beautifully all at once. I just want to remind you once more of the implications of this. So Ableton Live is a software that doesn't have ARA. Um, so if you want to use Melodyne or Vocaline, that's incredibly difficult. But if you just get your vocals over to Studio One for some quick ARA processing and you just drag them back into Ableton Live, that's suddenly not that big of a task anymore. So I'd ask you to keep in mind that many DAWs are complementary to each other and don't exclude each other. There's so many people who are adding new compression plugins, new EQ plugins to their workflow almost on a weekly basis, but adding a DAW, even though it's similarly priced, is still a very different beast. And maybe that example that you've just seen is some food for thought, how it could be differently. Back to Studio One and Adam SQ. Let's go. I already mentioned that the integration of Adam SQ in Studio One does go a little bit further even than it does in Ableton Live. So let me give you a couple of examples for this. Um, for instance, if we want to add an instrument, we have direct access to the Studio One browser from the Adam SQ. You can just go to the instrument tab, open up the instrument browser, go to the instrument that we want, just load the selected instrument, and there we go, it's ready to play. If we want to add some note effects to that to make it a bit more animated and spectacular, it's as easy as that. Just add a quarter and an arpeggiator and you immediately get something very, very nice. All the controls just work automatically. Um, so if I'm just going to switch to the Adam's Q right here. It also knows the most important parameters. Of the Mai Tai, for instance. So it's just immediately playable. But my personal highlight when using Adam SQ in Studio One, I have to say, is Impact XT and the pedal mode. So let me demonstrate. First of all, I want to take a look at this um, drum performance here. And I'd like to extract the different samples from this loop and then have them spread out over different Adam SQ pads and then I want to be able to sequence that to my liking and come up with an entirely new rhythm. So the first step when doing this is going up to the audio bend menu here in Studio One and then um, analyze the material like this. And now we can set a threshold so we want to make sure that each of these transients is being detected. Yeah, pretty much like this, that looks about right. And now we need to add the Impact XT. So let's once again do that uh, from the Adam SQ, opening up the instrument browser like that. Load the selected one, because Impact XT is already here. And now all we need to do is just drag this audio event onto the first Impact XT pad, 
while holding down shift. And now you can see that the text changes from insert sample to slice and spread across multiple paths. So what happens then is that at every point where we detected a bend marker, the impact T is gonna set a cut and put the following sample on the next pad. So if we do that, we end up with an entire layout here that we can also rename, recolor, and that's going to be immediately reflected on the Adam's queue. So for example, if I have my kick drums right here, that's a relatively clean one. Let me just make that a little bit shorter. That sounds about right. And now I can just uh, give that a blue color because I always like my kick drums in blue. And I already see that on the Adam SQ that this is going to be my kick drum and it just makes everything so much easier from a visual standpoint. This is probably a good snare so we just have to boost that a lot in gain. Make that a bit shorter. So that could be my clap. My claps are like in green. So now I know this is my kick, this is my clap. Now maybe I just go for a hi-hat. Yeah, and the ride. So this one here is gonna be my ride. And I'm gonna build some kind of a closed hi-hat from this. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's enough for now. And let's see how far we actually get with this. So to insert a pattern, you can either hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a Windows PC and double click, but you can also do it directly here from the um, Adam SQ. Just add a pattern like this, go to the editor page to open it up and you can start sequencing. So now we have the paths available at the top row and we can enter steps like on a classic analog step sequencer in the lower row and add a couple of these kick drums here. I hope they're gonna sound all right. And let's actually go ahead and mute the original drum track so we can just work on this pattern here. Okay, yeah, this sample definitely needs more volume here. There we go. Just a big fan of just adding some random stuff here and there as well. We can of course also play this in real time, we don't have to program everything. So this is a workflow that you wouldn't have in this way in Ableton Live, but if you just transfer your stuff back and forth, you can really harness the best out of both worlds. Thank you so much for your attention, enjoy the rest of the show, bye bye.